the forex industry has changed dramatically over the past few decades, with technology now pushing the boundaries even further. With me to discuss how the industry has evolved is Andrew Taylor, CEO of Royal Financial Trading Australia. Well, Andrew, forex trading in Australia, what's the market like there? Australia is seen as a quite uh, well-regarded market, and uh, we actually put that down to um, you know, a strong regulation and, a, and quite a sound financial bank banking system. What this has actually done over the time is, is given confidence to the Australian market and also has really put Australia as a, as a financial centre, uh, a hub that has given confidence to the market. So we find a lot of business feel comfortable, I suppose, bringing their business to companies in Australia. And uh, for someone like myself and, and Royal, we, we see that quite constantly. And I've seen uh, quite an increase or steady increase, I, I should say, over the years that um, it doesn't look like it's uh, receding either. So talk me through the evolution of liquidity and the current dynamics between banks, traders, brokers, etc. Uh, it's been very interesting. I mean, I've, I remember 20 odd years ago, 25 years ago, when an aggressive price in the Euro US was something like five pips or points in the market. And um, you know, the, the evolution of that really is just the, the, the spreads themselves, the prices themselves are just razor thin in the market. So uh, that, that's an evolution as far as the pricing goes. But what, when you look behind that, it's actually what's really important is more about uh, the execution and the real liquidity behind uh, those prices. It's one thing to have tight spreads, but if you can't actually execute on those prices, this is a, it's a concern. So the prices are derived from one main market, the interbank market, and is fed through, down through the market. So you find that everybody's trying to, in a essence, hit the same pricing. So the, the real trick and the real key to longevity and, and making your clients happy is being able to optimise that liquidity that comes through. And what this actually does is not just recycling like the rest of the market, where everybody's trying to hit the, the same price in, in volatile times, but actually optimising your own liquidity so you're providing an environment that it's uh, better execution for your clients to trade so that's something that's really important and, and you can see how the evolution of liquidity has, has come to this point. Technology is of course changing the trading landscape. What innovations do people need to be aware of? It comes down to a big piece of what this market is all about. There was a, a time when it was about the individual and how, how quick a, a phone transaction could occur and, and, and then it jumped online. The evolution of that part is, is you see now that we actually deal in microseconds. And this is technology that's brought that on, but it's, uh, what is also key is the latency, how long a, a price takes to receive electronically and how long it takes for you to actually execute on that trade. So the longer that that distance is, the wider the latency, the less likely you're going to be hitting the prices that you're wanting to do. So the premium brokers or the premium um, players in the market uh, invest heavily in technology and basically cutting down the latency so you're providing that better execution. What we've done at Royal is exactly that, invest, invested heavily. Uh, we have um, servers in uh, NY4 and LD4, London and New York, and we've gone even further to place a, a, what's called a cross connect. So it's it's literally a, a as best as you can get from the liquidity provider. For us, it's, it's literally the focus of the client, what they need, and it's an expense that we're willing to pay to make sure we have that long-term relationship. And what would you say are the key characteristics of navigating a successful brokerage? First and foremost, I think everything that you do, if you're in a client business, you've got to have the client in mind. If you build your business strategies around this, this notion, um, well, I believe you're halfway there. Understanding the market that you're in, what it is that, uh, that other people are doing, the more knowledge you have, the more power you have in your decisions. And the other one that, uh, that, that really stands out for me is, is the purpose. So the purpose that you have, uh, why are we here? Why are we doing this? Understanding that as a, as a company is really important. It's, it gives you the direction of, of where you're headed and knowing what you're about. And lastly, I suppose, is uh, to invest. To invest not just about capital outlay, but uh, really investing in your people. Richard Branson said, take care of your, your, your clients and your staff and they'll take care of your business. And it's just logical sense. And to me, that uh, is, is something I really believe in, yeah. Well, of course, keeping clients happy is a priority. How do you approach this? In the essence, you do need to have a, a good product. There is a, a product that's reliable and stable and people can count on, and that's where the investment in, in those uh, areas do come in. It's the human element, I think, that, that comes into that as well as, you know, your engagement with the client, letting them know that they are a part of your focus. 
uh, letting them know that they're supported and if there's anything that goes wrong or there's glitches that they're, you know, we're there for them. It's something that I think is said a lot. Uh, but not actually acted on. And it's one of those things that you can tell everybody a million times, but until it's actually uh, in action, that's when it really counts. I believe that if it costs actual resource and to have more staff so there's more time to be able to spend with the client and interact and, and understand them, well then so be it. To me, that's a, a good investment. Finally, how do you see the Forex market evolving in the coming years? I do believe that, that regulation is always welcome. I do think that um, there is a strong part that that the regulators need to pay within certain guidelines. They still need to be business friendly and, and we've seen in some region it hasn't obviously been that. It's been a different environment altogether. But for me, it's also seeing these partner businesses that, that do now sit in between the broker and the client who really do add value to the client's experience and, and knowledge. And for me, I see that really taking off as well, particularly in the emerging markets that don't have this quite set up and are learning about the markets and, and, and building. So for me, that's um, you know quite exciting times actually.